All right, welcome back to the Dispel Illusions podcast. And guess what? It's a special guest today, myself. <laughs> and today we're doing the first solo podcast of many, many more. And it's a it's a big day. I'm excited for today because this is something that I've wanted to do for so long and I just haven't done it and I haven't felt like I was ready. And if you know that feeling of fire, sometimes that candle within you, you know, gets a little bit dim. And then sometimes that thing is lit all the way up. And so right now, I feel like that candle is all the way up. And I'm ready to do so much. I'm ready to create so much. And I've learned so much in the past few weeks even, let alone month or two, that I'm ready to share. I got my water here. Gonna be sipping on periodically and I'm just gonna go into I, I thought about what am I gonna talk about for the first podcast because this is a big one for me because I want it to be something rememberable I want it to be something that I look back on and say yes I made the right decision I talked about what it is that is most near and dear to my heart and really I feel like that's why I do things I feel like explaining something that I really haven't talked about yet much, if at all, is why I do what I do. Why I do what I do every day. Why I am on here making content. Where have I been? And what's it been like? Okay. But I feel like the why might take a while. So we'll start with that. So in essence, you know, I'll take you back for a sec. I was reading earlier this morning. <laughs> it took you way back, didn't I? But <laughs> I was reading this morning and I was rereading the law of one. And if those of you that don't know what the law of one is, it's a it's a channeling and <laughs> just a quick rundown on channeling. It's basically when you have entities that you channel through your body and they speak through your body like an instrument. OK, and it's almost like. It's something, it's so hard to explain. So I guess that would be a good description, okay? And so, as I was reading the Law of One, which is the raw material, by the way, for those that also don't know that, but that's really besides the point. As I was reading the Law of One, I came across this page that struck me like almost like a deja vu moment, but I knew that in this life, I had actually read it before. And this page... Basically, this one sentence said, there's nothing else worth doing. And I'm paraphrasing. I don't know the exact quote. But basically, there's nothing else worth doing besides teaching slash learning or learning slash teaching. And it explained why, of course. But I remember reading that for the first time, you know, three, four years ago. I don't remember when it was the first time I got the book. I remember I had no money at the time and... I didn't even <laughs> I didn't even want to buy the book because it was 15 bucks and I was like I don't have 15 bucks. That's where I was at in my life. Uh, waiting tables, doing things that you know just trying to get by. But having a spiritual awakening in a sense of realizing that there's so much more. So the Love One books by the way, which if you want to read are free online and I'll put that in the link description to that. And so I was reading it online and I remember reading that page and thinking to myself like, oh, wow, if you really, and I really mean this, if you really dig deep down underneath all of the distortions of and illusions of what you think you want, you realize that, at least for me, because I can only speak from my perspective, that the only thing that's really worth doing at least for a career at the time that was the understanding was is helping other people because when you help other people you help yourself and the reason why this is is because if you understand that everything is one everything comes from one and everything is you and the best way i can describe this is by imagine that you could dream okay and you could control your dreams and you decided to dream 70 years 
And as you decided to dream 70 years, you figured out, wow, okay, well, this is easy. I can have whatever I want. But then you wanted to make it riskier. And as you wanted to make it riskier, you put yourself further and further out. You forgot that you were the divine itself. You forgot that you were all that was. Because the only way you could experience what it was like to not be all that is, is to forget. And so, here you are now, in this experience, and this is why everything comes from one in a sense. This is just one way to look at it. Is that you made everything here. You is in you that's listening. Because you are me. And you made everything here and if you made everything in here and are everything here just like in your dreams then that would inherently mean that every other person that exists is you and if every other person that exists is you then that means that when you teach yourself how to love more when you teach yourself unity, when you teach yourself love, you are inherently teaching others as well. And the reason why this is, is because everyone else is you. So you're technically teaching everybody else because there is nobody else but you. <laughs> so that's the kicker. And that's a big one to realize, but I encourage you to contemplate that. And if that isn't the truth for you at this moment, that's okay. Because this is all just one perspective. And this is what I've came to as a knowingness for myself. And every other opinion is valid. So remember that. And contemplate that truth. And as we contemplate that truth, we realize that what else is really worth doing? What else is really worth doing? accomplishing because you can I thought about doing a triathlon recently and I thought to myself well I'm learning the discipline of the triathlon but at the same time it's very brutal I don't know if any of you have ever done a triathlon specifically you because I'm talking to one person right but I don't know if you've done a triathlon, but, you know, I've done 5K, 10K, and it's pretty, pretty brutal. So it's like, do I want to put myself through that? And it's like, well, the people that put themselves through it from one perspective can inherently teach others and inspire others to do that thing. And what is it inspiring them to do? And it all depends on the perspective of the person doing it. This is why everybody's perspective is valid. So if somebody's perspective on doing a triathlon is to prove something, then it might not be the lesson that's worth learning. But if they're doing it to prove to themselves, that's the thing, right? If you're doing it just to prove to others that you can do it, everybody else is you, so you really don't have anything to prove. But if you are doing it to show yourself that you can push past your limits, the uncomfortableness that comes along with running so far, biking so far. I don't know the distances off the top of my head, but they're, I mean, they're pretty far. I mean, I think it's a three mile swim, 24 mile bike ride. I don't know what the run is, but it's long. So if you're doing it, and this is why it's so important to realize why you're doing things. I mean, this is the point of I'm speaking this today. It's because it's so important to realize what your point is and why you do things. So my why from that moment was blown out. Because at that point, you know, to bring it back, I was just doing things to do things. And what I mean by that is I was doing, that, doing things to prove myself because I was bullied as a kid. And I didn't feel like I was enough. So I was trying to make money in order to prove myself to others that I was worthy of love, right? And I didn't realize that at the time. And sometimes it's very hard, you know, to become aware of these things in the moment. But this is what an awakening is, right? You're awake 
to your thoughts to to what's happening and you realize that these thoughts that come up are not inherently you and as you realize this your why starts to change because you realize at least for me i keep saying you but at the same point you are me so it's a little bit confusing but when i realized <laughs> better said that i was doing things from a perspective of what i had learned from the past and how i had interpreted things it was you know sad at first because I, I realized that my life was just a program essentially because i was living in this matrix of who i thought i was and this is what i think the matrix means in a sense it, the matrix means it's this program of what you think you are that you're running and this program is what separates you from me from anybody else on this planet is the story that you think you are so if you look deep down and find that truth within you and you find that divine that's within you come to understand that apparently everybody else is me so there's nothing to prove and my whole life i was trying to prove up to that point i was trying to prove myself in some way like that i was trying to lose weight because i was 315 pounds at that point and i'm 100 and i think 75 now so that's like 140 i don't know what the number is but a lot of weight so i was trying to prove i was in the process of losing that i was trying to prove that i was worthy of a relationship i was worthy of people loving me and that i was just worthy in general and as i kept holding this illusion that i wasn't worthy up it almost became exhausting i mean let me know down below if you feel that sometimes it's exhausting to just try and hold up this image of who you are to the world because when you try and hold something up like you want to be worthy but you don't feel it it's exhausting to try and prove it day after day and i feel like that has been such a teacher for me to realize that I just got so fed up with trying to prove who I was and trying to be something that I just inherently said, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done living in this world of not being enough because it's literally driving me insane. And it's driving me insane because every day i wake up and in my motivation is to prove myself and after a while you just try and prove and prove and prove and it just you're just like that's it I, I just can't do it anymore so i've had that you know point and there's layers to it by the way i've had that multiple multiple times where it just feels like oh you wake up to the truth that you are enough you wake up a little bit more you wake up a little bit more you know then one time it just hit me and one of those times <laughs> as I bring it back to the original point was when I read that sentence that there's nothing else worth doing besides learning so that you can teach or teaching slash learning because when you teach you learn in a sense so when you do these things and when you learn from teaching others how to convey things better in love because when i've taught before in a sense some of the material that i've learned and not just external material but internal knowledge i've also learned how to relay that better to people uh, and you know for most of my content and material i've you know actually transitioned from a certain way of teaching it into a different way of teaching it because I realized that I wasn't being authentic to me. And one of these things that I wasn't being authentic was, with was swearing. And I went over this with a couple of people. But, you know, in this awakening time, I've come across this sense that I was doing things like I've been talking about. And they weren't inherently me. And swearing is one of them. I felt like I could reach more people because I swore a lot. And I felt like a lot of people swore. And so I just put it together in my head. Well, 
I guess if I continue to swear a lot, I'm going to seem more relatable in a sense, but it really wasn't me. And as I researched it and I got deeper into it, I realized that if everything really is energy, like Albert Einstein and Tesla both say, then as I talk, it really is just a vibration, right? The universe never understands English. It just understands the vibration that you're putting out with your vocal cords. And so for those of you that know what egregores or thought forms or that sort of thing is, it's really when a certain phrase or basically a certain vibration is uttered by humans, which could be taken into account with the oponopono in vocals in a vocal sense which if you those of you that don't know what that is it's basically when you say i'm sorry please forgive me thank you i love you and it seems cringe at first but what it really is is this phrase has been uttered by hawaiians for years and years and years and years and as it has it picks up a vibration in the air so to speak of those people of those ancestors chanting that that's why the word om has so much oomph behind it you could say it has so much uh how do you even put it into a tangible way to say this it has it has a strong vibration to it and it's used by so many meditators because over the years people trying to free themselves from suffering have used om which is the sound of the universe i believe it's in sanskrit i could be wrong on that but as it's been for literally thousands of years used it has a strong vibration of freedom to it of love and of unity because the people that have been using those words have been in that state of mind so swearing if you think about the type of person who swore and if you look up the roots of wh where swearing came from it's really the opposite that a person who is trying to speak from love and unity would want to do right because it's a lower level vibration and of course it's okay every once in a while but i just found myself more and more like almost every sentence in some of my content and i realized that over time I learned how to teach better. So from that one sentence, I gained so much information. And every time I come back to it, I learn something new. This is why I read The Power of Now over and over. And I'm reading, reading The Law of One and, you know, some Wayne Dyer books I've read multiple times. Because sometimes when you read it and you're at a different consciousness level. Or it's getting dry. But when you're at a different consciousness level, really. You take things differently. So when I reread this Law of One, as I will, coming up, I'm going to take this completely differently than the first time that I read it. Because I'm not the same person the day after, let alone years of awakening afterwards. So just be wary and actually not, not really wary, but be aware that when you reread things, you can get a whole different message. A whole different thing and another way to understand egregores by the way is with like palo santo like this if you if we're on youtube you can see i'm holding palo santo <laughs> but with palo santo and sage it's the same concept that the people that have used this for thousands of years and burned or smudged whatever it might be it has a vibration behind it because of the intention set before it was used. So it's used kind of like an instrument. I mean, this is the same reason why people use crystals, because it has a special meaning because of the way that it's been used before. Crystals are kind of a different story, so we'll go there eventually. But really, sage and palo santo and other different smudging materials have the same type of deal. It's like when you put out a vibration... We can talk about this related to the Akashic Records, too. That is stored in the Akashic Records. 
and as the Akashic Records, which is basically a storage house for information for the Earth. So everything that's ever happened on the Earth is stored in the Akashic Record. And as it is, so is this vibration of the people that use the Palo Santo. And so, when people use this, they tap into that Akashic Records in a sense. And when you... Really, when you're tapping into any words that have ever been used, you are, in a way, tapping into the Akashic Records because you're tapping into words that people have said. And that is in, and everything is in, the Akashic Records. So, I became aware of myself kind of playing out these programs and that that really was not who I am. And who I am is love and unity and I'm going to eradicate and purge with love, not with ignoring or bypassing, but with love, those things that no longer serve me. And as I do this, as I come back to love, because love is what I am, and as I realize it in a moment, but not gradually. And of course, you gradually get there all the time, but it doesn't take years to get there. You can get f to love and to unity in an instant and the only reason why people don't and you know me at first too is because it's hard <laughs> it's hard to get there because when you're in a state of being so identified with your emotions it's very hard to get from angry to love and so you kind of climb the ladder back up as you can and so to bring this back to why I do the things I do. This is why. I serve because I don't really see a purpose in doing other things. Like, I struggled for me. I didn't really struggle, but I thought about... I thought about doing Buddhism for a while. And by Buddhism, I specifically mean pursuing the Tibetan Buddhism light body and achieving total ego death and achieving the rainbow body for those that know what i'm speaking about and i thought about doing that and really going to a monastery and legit doing that like that was real for me for a bit like, i definitely was close to doing that and what i realized and this is just for me that that would be boring <laughs> and yes you could leave samsara in a sense which is the wheel of life and death and that is a possibility, yes. But if all of my other selves are stuck here in the matrix, in a sense, or their own matrix, really, I don't believe that I would be as of service to humanity as I could have been had I pursued a path that I am now, which is being in service to others. And so as I decided, I could do that and I know that I would be successful in attaining that rainbow body. But I don't believe it would be the real true service that I came here to do. You know, I think that as I've continued this journey, I've realized that everybody is me and I see that divine within them. And it was so important to realize that if you are helping one person, just one person, then it was worth it. Because if you help one person, that one person has the opportunity now to help another one person. Or actually help everybody. They really have the opportunity to. But if they help, let's say, two people and you help one person with just your message, think about the chain reaction. If then there's three people that are awake if they help too. And then if there's three people awake, then that means you could get even to four, five, six, seven, ten, twenty. Because each person now has the opportunity to speak their truth. And yes, some may not. But those that do are unwilling to spread love and unity will spread this message. And as they spread it, realizing that this impact that you could have on all of humanity can be so vast just by helping one person just by being there for one person 
because every single other person is you. And as you and I did realize that, there's nothing to prove. There's nothing you have to do. You have the knowledge within you to be enough. And you are enough right now. And that you, yes you, will never exist again. And what I mean by this is not that you'll never exist again in another body, but you in this body, mind, and time will never have this opportunity again. And that's real. And yes, you will continue to exist and go into different bodies and experience different things, and you'll you'll never cease to truly exist. But in this reality, in this time, in this body, in this knowledge that you have now, will never be able to give this again. You will never have this opportunity again. So as I say this to you, I encourage you to speak that which you know inherently you have inside of you. And the only thing that's telling you you're not worthy or you're not good enough or you're not ready is you. And that this message that you have at this consciousness right now that you're listening to this with, somebody will resonate with in the only thing that's telling you again that they won't is you so as you transcend this belief that you're not enough you realize that people will resonate with you along your journey at any point if you're at the beginning of your spiritual awakening people will also be at the beginning of their spiritual awakening and they will resonate with you and also People that are far along will resonate with your content about the beginning of spiritual awakening because they've been there. So do yourself a favor and realize that you are enough right now. And this time right now is such a pivotal time to step up and speak your truth because this planet needs you and it needs the light to shine and that as the law of one and as this podcast started off with is the only thing worth doing is teaching and learning or learning slash teaching because this helps humanity to grow and to grow back into unity and love and as we do that we come together and create a society that we all want to live in and that society being created starts with you and it starts with me and this is my why because I envision a society filled with unity, love, joy, compassion. And the only way that'll happen is if every single person who realizes that this is the truth, that unity is the answer, says and speaks their truth. And that can be spoken through dance. That can be spoken through art. That can be spoken through a podcast. That can be spoken through music. That can be spoken through what you do daily. How you are smiling at people when you go by. It can be so simple. But as you take the steps to realize that every, sing every single thing that you do has an impact. And that even a smile can impact somebody's day and change their whole life, really. They can say, oh, I want to be like that person. Man, they're happy. They're walking down the road and they're smiling at me when I go by. Maybe they don't even have a car. Wow. I want to be like that. I'm going to be like that tomorrow. And if they do that, do you see how it can just keep going and going and going? And you can make an impact. You don't have to make videos. You don't have to make music. You can do that with the people around you. You can change lives for the better. And the collective is always made up of each individual. Without the individual, there is no collective. And when the individuals come together and create that collectiveness of unity, love, joy, compassion, then this new earth is created. And this is why I do what I do. To create a planet where the ocean sea levels don't rise. I mean, they may rise and fall, but not by man-made causes where 
we use all recyclable materials, where we eat real organic food, where we care about the animals that we have, where we don't destroy our planet. And the only way to do this is by realizing that love is the answer and to preach love. Because hate cannot get rid of hate. Only love can purge hate. Only love can transcend the dark. Because love is the light. And as the light shines on the dark, it purges it. And as the purging of the dark happens, we come to a place of love. And this is my message. This is my truth. That love is the answer. And that love will always be the answer to every one of your issues. It can all be broken down to love itself. Because when I wasn't loving myself enough, that's when I didn't feel like I was worthy. When I wasn't loving my self enough that's when I was depressed that's when I wanted to take my life when I felt these deep dark emotions realized that these emotions are happening because your compass to love has been a little bit out of whack and as we come back to love however we may do that and I can speak about that for 10 podcasts So we'll get there. But my why is to help people return to that love. Because I've been to those deep, dark places and I've returned to love. I've been poor. I've been having divorced family. I've been having people around me, my family, not love me. I've been feeling like nobody cares about me. I've been in these darkest pits of hate. And here I am. Here I am in front of you. Telling you that you can make it. That you are enough. And that anything that makes you feel like you're not enough is an illusion. Because in order to have this experience, you had to have both. You had to have the yin and the yang, so to speak. This is what this means. There will always be some sort of darkness. This is the yin and yang, by the way. I don't know if you can see that. But there will always be some sort of darkness as a teacher. But what we can do is transcend that as much as we can. Not by bypassing it or by pretending that everything is always good and gravy. But by loving it and having compassion no matter what it is. Sometimes you might stray away from compassion and love. But as you return through your compass and your guidance system, being back to love, you will create that life of love that you want. Because what do humans and what do souls really want, right? What do beings really want in life? They want to feel loved. They want to feel connection. They want to feel joy. They want to feel like they matter. And you can transcend the opposites of those by realizing that there is no there is no journey that you can almost reach and you can not just almost but you can reach that state right now but it's up to you because nobody will ever do it for you and I say that with so much love because when you take responsibility for your whole life then your why starts to change Because you take responsibility and realize, oh, I've created all these issues. And as you create a new life for yourself in a new existence, and you focus on that new existence of love, and you work through those roads, those neural pathways that you've woven so deep of, it could be anything, could be drinking, smoking, you know, telling yourself you're not worthy, hating yourself. As you've wove those deep pathways and you unwind them and start getting that new road, you start forking off into love. You start returning back. Realize that you can do that like this in an instant. You can do that so quick. And the only thing holding you back from doing that is you. Because I know I've been there being so angry, so frustrated that life has done this to you. And being so deeply ingrained in these thoughts. 
And I think it's important to realize that when these thoughts come up, they're, they are just teaching you. And that even today, somebody pulled into my driveway while I was shooting an Instagram story. And I was like, really? Because I was in the middle of a, you know, in the middle of one. And I realized that that's a lesson. That's a lesson that most of this that happens in your life is a lesson in one way, shape, or form. That lesson's coming. And as that lesson keeps coming over and over, how to love yourself more, really. Because all lessons will come to you in a different form. But it is the same lesson. For example, I had the lesson of looking for external peace outside of me. <laughs> and as I had this lesson, I kept getting things that were taking away my peace, whether that be kids that ran by. I mean, imagine this. I'll tell you the full story. I was at Bear Lake, Michigan, and there was nobody there but me. And as I was there at this lake, I was like, oh, this is so peaceful. I'm so excited. I get to have this peace and this wonderful joy. and fam. Oh, I'm just so excited. And as I was there, I had this time <laughs> where as soon as I sat down, fishermen, the only fishermen on this big mile, a couple mile lake at least, they came up and they went right in front of me. And I didn't have peace because I gave it to them. And then kayakers came up behind them. And they, and they left. And then as soon as they left, I'm not kidding, within two seconds. More people. More people came up behind me. And somebody started throwing a frisbee for their dog. Then a couple seconds after that, a park ranger came and started picking up trash. And I gave my peace away to every single person. Every single external thing. And it just kept going. There was an alarm that went off at that pavilion up top. And then there was another people that were walking by and talking loud. And I just kept giving my peace away. And the lesson that I learned was this. That as long as I look for peace outside of me, I will never have it. Because peace never comes from within, without comes from within let me reiterate when you maintain your internal peace that is cultivated through these higher level vibrations and attitude and emotion and you take responsibility and you guard that you guard your peace like you were guarding a fortress then nobody can take that away from you when you have that love within and you're shining it and people just keep trying to blow it out. But you're like, nope. You keep moving. Nope. Nope. You don't let them blow it out. You realize that even transcending the belief that it, they can blow it out eventually is the truth. That they can go on your flame, but they can't blow it out. Because your flame cannot be blown out when you are powerful enough. When you step into your power enough. And that power being love itself. When you step in to that joy of being enough. And rem remember that I'm just bringing you back to the place where you were. And that even if you don't believe in some of the things that I said, what is it gonna hurt? What is it gonna hurt to really just cultivate love within you? I feel like stopping your own suffering is the thing that you want and of course not everybody wants that at that point or at, at, at any point not everybody wants the same thing but if you're on a spiritual journey to change yourself you you eventually just you're like i'm done suffering and you don't want to you don't want to suffer anymore in some respect and so as you relieve your own suffering that's all i'm trying to do is lead you back to love and this will be the center for all of my teaching, this this will be the center for everything that I do is to bring myself being this being right here back to love, which would be learning and then bring that slash in and then teach the rest.
you know, and as I film this podcast for the first time, I think I the thought comes up in my mind, and I want to share this with you and be vulnerable, that during this podcast, I haven't shown enough emotion, that I haven't been, you know, really feeling it like I do when I talk sometimes, and that I should redo this podcast because there's my mind is telling me that it's insecure because I haven't been had enough tonal variation. <laughs> I haven't had enough of the ups and downs and, it, and it's not going to be interesting enough to people. But what I want to relate to you is that this is just the trick of the mind and it will get you to keep going, keep keep fixing it and you're not enough and you got to you got to redo it and you got to do another video because this 40 minute video already isn't good enough. Because you haven't shown enough, so you got to redo those 40 minutes, Chief. You just got to go. <laughs> this is what the mind does. The mind knows you. Because it's been around. So it knows your pressure points. It knows what's, where it can poke you to actually get you to redo it. Because it's been with you this whole time. That you've been in this experience. So as it tries to poke you and prod you into saying you're not enough, remember that you are always in control. And that as I identify with those thoughts of, oh, I guess I should redo this podcast because I wasn't animated enough in a way. I have the choice right now. And this is our real time example of exactly what I've been talking about in this podcast. <laughs> I have the choice to say, am I enough in this moment? Will I choose love for myself? That this effort that I've put into this so far has been worthy of it. And I choose love. I will always choose love. And as I transcend this belief that I'm not enough, these thoughts come up. It's like I heard Alan Watts say one time, when you try and leave town, and imagine back in the Wild West, Westworld, <laughs> if you will. When you try and leave town, those debt collectors are going to be like, wait, you can't go yet. You can't go yet because you still owe me money. That's kind of what the mind does. It's saying, I'm trying to leave town right now and go back to love. And it's saying, whoa, hold on. Hold on. You're not worthy of that. You, wait, you, got, you got all this. You got all this back here. Take a look at all this hate and all this unworthiness right over here. Yeah. You see this? <laughs> That's the trick that the mind plays. This is the game that the mind wants to play. Because as you redo it and as you stay back in here in unworthiness, this is where the known is. This is where all the familiarity, you could say, is. And it doesn't know where love's going to lead you. It doesn't. So it's just trying to stay and protect you. But that's the thing is it doesn't understand. But you understand that love is the answer and that you've been wired a certain way through your past, through these different ways that you have energy stuck within you. And the only way to transmute and alchemize that is right now, right now. And it will always happen in this right now moment because the past only happen happened in the now, but it was a now back then. So that was technically the now, but it was in the past. But it was your, it was now then when it happened. So this is why time is an illusion. Is that when when that future comes, it'll actually be now. But it just doesn't seem like it. Same thing for the past. So, you only have this now moment. Really, you only have this now moment. So, these are the decisions daily that I'm sure you go through as well. Are you going to choose love? Or are you going to try and choose perfection like the ego wants? And I hope that I can inspire you to just be. And as you just be, realize that that's enough. That there's really nothing to prove. Really, can you feel it? There's nothing to prove. 
Nothing that you have to do to be worthy. And that you are already worthy. You just have to realize that you're worthy. Because the only thing that's stopping you from doing what you really want to do is that you're not worthy in some way. Whether that be you're an athlete and I'm not worthy because I'm not fast enough to play football. Could be I'm not worthy enough to speak because my voice isn't good enough. I'm not worthy enough to draw because my drawings aren't good enough. I'm not worthy enough to make music because I don't feel worthy. When you're not confident enough to break through that ego, this is the way with love and to love those things that are within you so deeply that you feel electricity pour through your body and you free yourself of that binding that you put yourself in when you energetically received that and didn't get rid of it. You hold, you held on to it. And as you put down your bags, take your clothes off, however you want to say it, as you take these energetic clothes off, if I'm not worthy in confidence, comes back. You realize that I can be this way all the time. And that really the people that are successful in whatever way you want to even say that are really, it's just a vibration. Success is a vibration. Okay? Success is this feeling that you feel. It's not this thing that you achieve. Success is now because there's nothing to achieve so you are inherently feeling success because what really is success it's what you perceive it to be and if for one person even for me success is loving myself every day and loving others and giving and giving because that's who i am not because i need to give not because i need something in return because giving is who i am and that's a success to me. And I am successful at every moment because I don't need to achieve. I'm successful just for being here now. You're successful for being alive. You're successful for loving yourself fully and deeply right now. And there is no external validation that really proves success because as you know when p some of the unhappiest people are the people that are the most successful because society has defined success and as society defines success there's this thing that you have to reach this is a bridge but we'll talk about that in another podcast but like again that's one that i could talk about for a while but my why is based on one thing serving others and that is what i will do until the day i die that is something that i will live until i leave this earth and i will serve with unconditional acceptance of where i am what it is that's happening because there's no condition to my love for you. There's no condition to how many people view my content, whether it's worth it. There's no condition to anything that I do because I give because that is the only thing worth doing. And as I embody love, love gives unconditionally. Love gives from a place where it doesn't need to receive, just like the sun doesn't need to receive anything back. It just gives. It gives unconditionally because that's what it does. Like the trees give unconditionally life to you through oxygen. It isn't asking you anything in return. 
and I realize that nature has this truth within it. And this truth is that when you give, and I hope you feel this because I feel so, I feel so warm in my heart saying this. I feel my third eye light up. I feel my heart so warm when I say this, but really, if you hear anything from this, I mean, I feel like so emotional even saying this. But when you give from a place of just utter love, when you give from that place of just compassion, it is so fulfilling just to give, not to get anything, but just to give. Because giving is who you are. Love is what you are inside, deep. You found it. In an instant, I come back to love. I return to that which I am. And as I return more and more every day and every moment in this now moment, I choose love. It becomes a frequency that I embody. And then that presence is felt within the collective. It's like a wave. It's like you're a boat, imagine. Close your eyes and imagine. It's like a boat that goes by. Imagine a bunch of people on the beach going, just chilling. They're all asleep, <laughs> but they're in the water. Imagine they're just floating asleep on a, on a, on a pad, whatever. And you're floating by on your boat. You're actually going really fast by on your boat. And as you awaken to love, you go faster. You have more momentum. You go so fast. That vibration is so strong that it makes a wake, right? Do you see it? Do you see the metaphor? The wake awakens those that are sleeping in the water. And as those are awakened by your wake, because your wake is so strong, because you're going so fast, because the vibration of love is so fast. Even if you look at the frequencies of sound waves and of love, it's fast because it's unity. And if you think about the up and down of the waves, right? The sound waves themselves, when it's going fast, what's happening? The waves are closer together because they're coming closer to unity. Do you see it? Unity is coming together. That's why love is fast. Love is a frequency. Love is that thing that transcends even the speed of light. Because there's no separation. And as you wake up to this truth of love and light that you are, and really take away the societal conditioning that love is cringe and love isn't is this thing that you need to search for, when you realize that love is right now, Love is right here waiting for you to come home. You wake up. And when you wake up, you come closer with that boat and you drive faster by them. And that wake that you leave behind, when you go by, wakes people up. Because when the wake is bigger, that wave that comes in is larger. So it rattles them more. So as you plant that seed of love for others, yes, many may not hear it and may not acknowledge it, but you're planting that seed and you're waking them up a little bit more. It's like they're in a deep sleep and you have that boat, you're going fast and that wave rocks them back and forth. They might not wake up fully, but they might make up a, wake up a little bit. It's like when you wake up and you're still drowsy. That might That may not slap them back into it, but it plants that seed, and that seed will grow. I have faith every single time. I say what I say, and I do what I do. I have faith that humanity, as humanity is me, will come back to love. And as it comes back to love, I awaken each part of myself. And as I awaken each part of myself, as you awaken, you are me, and you can awaken others and we, as a collective, can change the world into a vision of unity, love, kindness, compassion. And that starts with you. And I realize that that starts with me. And so I'm on here. It's 
speaking to you with the utmost love and compassion for wherever you are in your journey. Because I believe in you. I believe in your ability to transcend these limiting beliefs and realize that you are unlimited within. And as you realize this, come back to this truth of what life is, of what you are, and dispel the illusion that you're not enough. You will come back to love. And as you come back to love, you free yourself of all suffering. And as you free yourself of suffering, you may free others of suffering. And this is the chain reaction. This is the legacy that you will leave on this planet. And this is why I do what I do. To leave a legacy not of what I looked like or what I, what I, what I said or I might have achieved these things or monetary success, whatever those things might come, but it's not about those. This why is about planting the seed within those which I reach, which I'm so grateful for you even being here. But as I reach you, and I plant that seed within, it may grow instantly, or it may take time. And whatever it does, the seed is planted. I'm just gardening and helping those to grow with no judgment on if you're not there. And remember, when you're helping to plant the seeds, as you will, because I believe in you. And as you plant the seeds for others, they may not awaken at first, like I said, but as they come back to love, you've completed. You've give. You give from that space of not even worrying about receiving. And as you give with unconditionality of what happens, you are free of any worry about what happens. And then you embody the highest vibration that you can. Unconditional love. And as you are in unconditional love, that vibration rains out into the cosmos. And I know that it might not seem like it matters sometimes, but you matter so much to all of us. And the fact that you're here and alive in the greatest time of connectivity in our history that we know of, <laughs> in our 2000 year recorded history, as you come back to love, you may awaken others. And this is my why. This is why I do things. To unconditionally give. I give and my why, if said in one sentence, is to help others return to unity. I give to help you return to love. And I will give this way till the end of time because it's who I am. It's what I am. And when you give from this place of love, your heart is just so open. Your chakras, chakras open up. <laughs> all the wheels open. All the wheels are turning. However you want to say it. Whatever you believe in. You become that channel of love. And as I become that channel, I'm free. And as I'm free, you hear the free. I'm sure you can hear the, the freeness, if that's a word, in my voice. That, that just, that just relaxness. You take that seriousness away and you just, you just give just to give. And as you just give to give, you're free, you're love. Oh, and it feels so good. This is all about just returning back to that which feels good. Love, kindness, compassion. And if it doesn't feel good right now, you may have to rewire yourself. You have to rewire yourself back to love. It may take time and I will be here all the way along this journey with you. 
and you are never alone. So, for first solo podcast, that should be that should be it. I hope you enjoyed, my friend. Thank you for being here with me all the way through. I love you. It's been an amazing time. I absolutely love this, and I will be doing this once a week, if not twice, because I feel so passionate about it. I feel so much love for you. I feel so much love for all beings that exist. And I just want to cultivate that. I just want to cultivate that. and I will be here spreading this message of love. I hope you resonate. And I'll see you on the next one. All right.